Star Trek. I love it. If I could join Starfleet, I freaking would. Old Star Trek, mind you, not the new stuff. Specifically, the next generation. I would serve aboard the Enterprise in a heartbeat. Captain Picard is Bay. You understand? There is nothing I want more in this world than to be in Star Trek. And now thanks to this Starship Simulator, I can be. This is the demo at the moment. I've just discovered it existed, I downloaded it, and I have not even started it yet. This is the first time I'm seeing anything about it. And we are in. All right, now I just tweaked a few settings. Now we're good. Uh, this game, obviously, you it simulates a starship and all the systems and subsystems, you can power them up and they all work like they really would. Should I do training? Because I don't know how to do a starship. The cold start sequence, let's do that. All Welcome right. Welcome to the Magellan Class oh. Cold Start Training Module. My name is Ava. I'm the UN Space Fleet's AI voice assistant. Well, hello, Ava. In this Ava. module, we will review the correct procedure for starting up the ship's fusion reactor and then supplying power to the vessel. Okay. The ship is currently in a cold and dark state, so for your safety, I have taken the liberty of turning on your torch for you. Thank you. To begin, follow the waypoints on your HUD to the lower floor of the reactor room. All right, following the waypoints. Seems easy enough. Ooh, look at that. It's the warp core. As you can see, the reactor is offline, and none of the ship's systems are powered. Yep. Our first task is to provide power to the engineering decks. So let's make our way to the start capacitor's room. Follow the waypoints on your HUD to the startup distributor. That's over this way. Ooh, a screen. As its name suggests, the startup distributor routes energy from the start capacitors to the engineering decks and also provides the reactor with the power it needs to create the initial fusion reaction. Makes sense. You'll notice the device is already powered because the start capacitors are fully charged. Let's go ahead and get some lights on by connecting all of the breakers. All right. Start with the G-Deck breakers, as indicated. Do I, do I click? Oh, I do. You can hear them clicking on. And now on. the F-Deck breakers. I like that. Excellent. Now we can see what we're doing. You we can go ahead lighting. and turn off your torch by pressing T. The reactor controls should now be online, so let's walk back to the reactor room and take a look. All right. Ooh, it's on, sort This of. console displays the reactor's vital information and provides you with full control over the reactor and its subsystems. On the left-hand side, we have the coolant section, which shows the liquid helium coolant flow Important. and the condition of the magnetic field coils. On the right-hand side, we have the electrical section, which shows the reactor's main electrical bus, right. along with its input and output feeds. In the center, we have the reactor's main display, where we can control the fusion reaction itself. Okay. As you can see from all of these alarms, it would be impossible to initiate a stable fusion reaction under the current conditions, so let's fix that. Okay. The first thing we need to do is supply power to the reactor's internal bus, so go ahead and switch the reactor to startup mode by pressing the indicated button. All right, right there. Great. Now that the reactor has power, we can activate the vacuum pump to start purging the confinement chamber. Activate pump. The chamber pressure should now be dropping. To sustain a fusion reaction, we need an internal pressure of less than 10 nanopascals. Ah, uh, yes, nanopascals. While we wait for the confinement chamber to reach its target pressure, let's take care of the reactor's fuel and coolant supplies. Exit the reactor room via the door behind you and follow the waypoints on your HUD to the cryogenic storage room. Uh, this is... this is... I, this is just fun. I'm loving this. Cryogenic storage. These storage tanks hold all of the cryogenic fluids that are used to both fuel and cool the reactor. All four tanks are currently empty. So our first task is to begin the filling process. Let's start with the helium coolant. Head behind the storage tanks to access the helium cryo cooler. All right, that's over this way. The cryo coolers use a process called magnetic refrigeration to convert gas into a cryogenic fluid before pumping it into the connected storage tank. Start up the helium cryo cooler now by using the indicated control on its user interface. You mean just press the on button? I can do that. Excellent. Now, if you turn around, you'll find the helium refill valve located on the back wall. All right, there. These valves control the flow of gases harvested by the ship's gas collection hardware, which is located on the underside of the forward hull. Go ahead and open the helium supply valve now to oh. begin supplying the cryo cooler with helium gas. Okay. If you turn around again and inspect the display screen connected to the helium tank, you should be able to confirm that the tank is now filling with fluid. 
It is, it is. We now need to perform the same sequence of events for the other three tanks. Head over to the Helium-3 cryo-cooler next. Helium-3 is the here. first of two fuels used in the fusion reaction. Right. As before, power up the device using its user interface. Okay. And now open the Helium-3 refill valve behind you to start filling its associated tank. All right, open this one. Next, we need to start filling the two deuterium tanks. So let's head over to the other side of the room. Okay, is that one filling? It is... Deuterium, also known as heavy hydrogen, is the second of the two fusion fuels. We store double the amount of deuterium compared to helium-3 because deuterium also fuels the reactor's neutral beam injectors. Ah, yes, the As neutral before, beam injectors. turn on the first deuterium cryo-cooler. On. And now the first deuterium refill valve behind you. On. Next. Turn on the second deuterium cryo-cooler. On. And now the second deuterium refill valve. On. Okay, perfect. All four storage tanks should now be filling with cryogenic fluids. For our next task, we now need to engage the cryo-pumps in order to start supplying the reactor with everything it needs. Make your way around to the other side of the tanks and locate the deuterium tank outflow valve. This, this video is easy. I hardly said anything. I don't need to. She's just saying it all for me. Open the deuterium outflow valve to begin supplying fluid to its connected cryo-pump. Now, you see... That's just going to leak out, is what that's going to do. Okay, I trust you. Open. Next, power on the pump itself using the button indicated on its user interface. Power on. Excellent. That's half of the fuel mix taken care of. Now head over to the Helium-3 tank outflow valve so we can complete the fuel supply. As before, begin by opening the Helium-3 outflow valve. Oh, right there. Open. And now engage the Helium-3 cryo pump. Power Perfect. on. All we have to do now is take care of the coolant flow. Okay. Head over to the helium tank outflow valve. And now open the helium outflow oh, valve. right here. Open. And finally, power on the... Power. There we go. The reactor is now being supplied with all the fuel and coolant it needs. Nice. Follow the waypoints back to the reactor room, where we have just a few more valves to open. So many valves, so little time. To complete the coolant loop, open the helium inflow valve to start flowing coolant through the magnetic field coils. Okay. Now make your way around to the opposite side of the reactor to complete the fuel supply process. First, open the deuterium inflow valve. Open. And now open the helium-3 inflow valve. Open. Okay, great. Let's head over to the reactor controls and take a look at the coolant display. Oh, right here. As you can see, we now have coolant flowing into the reactor. This has begun the process of cooling down the magnetic field coils, nice. which must reach temperatures below 20 Kelvin in order to become superconductive. That's chilly. Okay, the temperatures look good. Okay. You can now power up the field coils. All right, field coils online. With a solid vacuum established, the field coils powered up, and fuel flowing into the reactor, you are now free to initiate the fusion reaction. Ooh, this is the moment. You ready? We're going to turn it on. Boom. Congratulations. Oh. You have now successfully started the fusion reactor. For safety, the reactor automatically starts up at only 10% of its rated power. Right. This means high voltage systems, such as the FTL drive, will be underpowered until you increase the reactor output. Let's resolve that now. Increase the power level to 100% using the indicated controls. All right. You'll notice that you can increase the power beyond 100%, but doing so for an extended period will overheat the reactor, causing damage and forcing an uncontrolled shutdown. Okay. Okay. We won't do that. We now need to provide power to the rest of the ship. With the reactor now powering itself, you can go ahead and switch the internal bus mode from startup to supply. Supply? Perfect. If we now head around to the opposite side of the reactor, the reactor output distributor should now be powered up. This device distributes the reactor's output to the ship's high voltage systems, which are in fact the only systems powered directly by the reactor. The rest of the ship is powered by 48 individual battery arrays, which we now need to begin charging using the reactor's output. Go ahead and connect all five of the output breakers here. All right, sublight distributor, weapons, shields, FTL distributor, and battery distributor. Excellent. If you turn to your left, you'll see the five high voltage distributors are now coming online. Head over to the main battery distributor. All right. This device takes the high voltage reactor feed and distributes it to each of the eight battery rooms on F deck. Go ahead and connect all eight output breakers. A lot of damn batteries. Perfect. The battery arrays should now be charging. Nice. But we should perform a visual inspection to make sure. Of course. Follow the waypoints on your HUD to port battery room one. Battery room one, here I come. And I can see why you need a big crew for a, a starship, because doing all this by yourself is a little bit, um, 
tedious. The electrical supply on Magellan-class starships is divided into four isolated quadrants. Forward, aft, port, and starboard. Okay. For increased redundancy, each quadrant is powered by two physically isolated battery rooms just like this one. Should the battery arrays in one room cease to function for any reason, the arrays in the second room will continue providing power to that particular quadrant. Similarly, power to one quadrant can be lost entirely without impacting the supply to the remaining three quadrants. Okay, Brilliant design. let's take a look at one of the individual battery arrays. This one. On the left-hand side of the user interface, you have controls for managing the input and output breakers. And in the center, you have controls and information relating to this array's 10 solid-state battery cells. If we did everything correctly, all of the cells should now be slowly charging up. They are indeed. For the next step, we now need to connect each of the eight battery rooms to the ship's electrical grid. These this task eight? will take us into the ship's labyrinth of maintenance tunnels, so be sure to watch your head. Follow the waypoints on your HUD to Port Battery Aggregator 1. Port Battery Aggregator 1. Ooh, I'm in a maintenance tunnel, a Jeffrey's tube. Each battery room has a corresponding battery aggregator, just like this one. These devices perform load balancing, and also combine each room's six individual battery arrays into a single high voltage feed. Go ahead and connect the output breaker now, which will connect this set of battery arrays to the ship's electrical grid. Connect. Okay, one down and seven more to go. Next, head over to port battery aggregator two. Which, which way? This way. As Same before, thing. connect this aggregator's connect. output breaker. That takes care of the port battery rooms. All right. Let's make our way to the forward quadrant next. Forward quadrant. I'm on my way. Here we are. Go ahead and connect the output breaker. Connected. And the same again on forward battery aggregator two. Connected. Okay. Onwards to the starboard quadrant. Onwards. Starboard same again. quadrant. Connect the output breaker. And the and second starboard aggregator. One. See, I'm way ahead of Almost you. Almost done. Just the aft quadrant to go. I got this down now. I could do this myself. I couldn't. Connect up the first aft aggregator. Done. And finally, the second aft aggregator. Connect. Okay, perfect. All 48 of the ship's battery arrays are now connected to the electrical grid. All right. All we have to do now is supply power to the ship's remaining decks, and then perform a few cleanup tasks. We can do most of that from the reactor room, so let's head there now. What is this room? Just a massive empty room. Sorry, I got distracted. All right, we're back. Each deck in a given quadrant is fed by a deck distributor, which takes the total electrical load of that quadrant and then load balances it between the two connected battery aggregators. Okay. Go ahead and connect the output breakers for all seven decks in this quadrant. Oh, powering up the decks. There we go. Okay, now head over to the starboard deck distributor and do the same. I, why can't there just be an on button? Connect, 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 connect. And now the aft deck distributor. And once again, connect, 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 connect. And finally, the port deck distributor. Last one, baby. Boom, 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 boom. Perfect. All quadrants on every deck now have power available from the ship's main battery arrays. Sick. You'll notice, however, that the ship is still under emergency lighting conditions. I have noticed that. Because F and G decks are still using the start capacitor's supply. Ah. To resolve this, we simply have to switch the four quadrant distributors on F and G decks over to the main battery feed. All right. Each deck has four of these devices, one for each quadrant. They are fed by the corresponding deck distributor. Yes. Go ahead and switch this quadrant over to the main battery feed. That's better. Now we ah, can really see what we're doing. Ah, there we go. Now head over to the starboard quadrant distributor and do the same. All right, take everyone off of emergency lighting. And now the aft quadrant distributor. A little bit of power for you. And finally, the port quadrant distributor. A little bit of power for you. That's G deck taken care of. Let's do the same for F deck. Why isn't it down here with the rest of them? As before, switch. Yep, connect. And now the same on the starboard quadrant distributor. Oh god, we gotta do this for each deck, don't we? Holy crap. I'm gonna have to just go up and each finally, deck and the turn them all on. Distributor. Well done. That's the main objectives of the cold start procedure oh, no, complete. Not. But we have one final bonus task to perform. Ooh, bonus task? Follow the waypoints on your HUD up to the bridge, and we'll make the ship flight ready. Ooh, the bridge to the bridge to the bridge. It's very lovely in here with the lights on, I must say. Oh my god, we're going to the bridge. Conference rooms. 
Hell yes. I can sit. Let's have a meeting. I'm the only one here. I'm so alone. The, bridge. the lights and bridge systems are still turned off. Yep. So let's bring everything online. Okay. Now go ahead and turn on the bridge lighting. And now power up the bridge systems. Oh, systems. Okay, there we go. You have successfully started the fusion reactor, routed power to all of the ship's decks, and brought the bridge online into a flight-ready state. I have indeed. This concludes the Magellan-class cold start training module. Good luck, and I hope you'll join me again in future training modules. Yes, of course. Can I keep playing on this, or is it going to kick me out now? I can keep playing on this. Also, there's a, a galaxy right here. Oh my goodness, I am free and loose on the deck of a starship. Is that the captain's chair? Oh my goodness. The chair swivels! I can do condition normal, yellow alert, red alert, disco mode. Oh hell yeah. I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna go somewhere. Oh my goodness, I can control the ship. How does one make it go forward? Oh, I have different camera views. <gasps> That's the ship that I'm on. It's a flying saucer. It looks like you know how the Enterprise can disconnect from the nacelles and just emergency separate whatever? That's what that looks like. I'm not sure how you achieve forward propulsion. Auto navigation, engaged. Oh, I don't know where it's taking us though, so disengage that. How do you, how do you, how do you target? How do you use this map and target? That's the center of the galaxy that is the target and that's us. All right, this is, this is sensors and stuff. Star system. Oh, look at that. It shows star system. Targets in range. Pluto. Let's go to Pluto. It says sensor target. Um, send to helm. That send it into here. You sensor target. I think it might have. ETA 999 plus years. Engage auto navigation. Oh, we're moving. I've got to power up the FTL system and then do it, right? Oh, do I have to click engage? Oh my God, I'm an idiot. There we go. Now we've got some speed. ETA imminent. Oh, that was fast to get to Pluto. Oh, is it going to stop? Oh, is it going to stop? Oh, I hope it really actually stops. And it did. Ooh, we have arrived at Pluto. Look at that. Well, uh, there's Pluto. And that was uh, Starship Simulator. The demo. Very fun, actually. Quite fun. I'm going to spend a lot of time just starting the ship up. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.